Hello, this is Dr. Jensen, and welcome to CCJ 3701, Research Methods in Criminology. So this is a brief video to give you some tips and tricks, welcome you to the class, and show you how to get started. Let's begin. So I'm Dr. Jensen, and you'll see me mostly on screen just like this, hearing my voice, um, walking you through different kinds of information, uh, helping you with your software, with the, all kinds of stuff. So I am available via Zoom meeting, and I have a Google Voice number, and you can call me as well. Um, I have office hours pretty much every single day, so you can reach out for help. But uh, let's show you uh, what this class is about and go ahead and jump in. By way of an agenda, uh, just wanted to tell you a little bit about me. We do not have a textbook for this class, and I like to say that on the first day of class, so you're not off running around trying to find a textbook that doesn't exist. We have class goals, and we'll go over what you will learn, um, expectations of you, what you should expect from me, and also how to be successful in the course. So uh, this is me. Um, this is my education. I'm not going to go through this in a lot of detail, but um, I have a PhD, two master's degrees, and I previously taught at uh, BYU for seven years, and I've been here at University of Florida for five years. So uh, my highest rated course is Social Statistics and Research Methods, and I take a lot of pride in this class and uh, the students that take it. So please uh, keep that in mind. This is a priority class for me. It's required to graduate, and it gets most of my attention um, in comparison to other classes that I teach uh, because of those facts, because you have to pass this class to finish your major. So, um, but yeah, this is my background. This is where I'm from. I've lived in Oklahoma and Texas and I uh, lived all over the place, but Florida is now home for me. So I am like you. Uh, my degree from Louisville was 100% online. So I've been on the other side of the keyboard, um, having to submit assignments and do video chats and Zoom meetings with professors and classmates and group work and all kinds of stuff like that. So I know the strain it can be to learn remotely. And I try to take that into consideration as I set up office hours, as I set deadlines and due dates, uh, because when I did this master's degree, I was working full time, as many of you are, and need flexibility in your work week. So uh, we'll go over that uh, when we look at the syllabus as well. Um, I've worked in a lot of different places as a criminologist and uh, also as a social worker. So these are some places I've worked, practiced, and partnered, and I try to make my labs uh, reflective of these kinds of places uh, so they can feel more real life, things you'd have to do research or statistics on um, out there in the world of work. So um, again, just by way of background, I've, I've worked with a lot of, of people in the criminal justice arena. So again, there is no textbook. It's hands-on learning. The materials for learning are mostly from articles and best practices. Uh, we're using software. I'm teaching this class in an applied manner as if it was for your job. So treat this class not like a college course, but more like a workshop where you're doing labs and doing practice on skills every single week. So this class needs your attention every single week you're here. Um, so kind of treat it more like a like a training or a workshop, and you'll probably do better in that mindset. Uh, we don't have discussion boards, but we will have regular group communication times. Um, there are lots of announcements I send out, reminders. Um, we can do group Zoom meetings if you want to do that, or kind of um, office hours with you and, and lab partners and stuff like that. So, so those are a possibility. The next slide is actually a picture of uh, one of our department administrative assistants, Lysandra. I had her pose like this over in Turlington Hall because I wanted to show you the setup that I think is most successful for this class. So here she has her computer monitor. It actually has windows open of SPSS, including a data set and an output window. And then you see she has her keyboard and mouse, but she also has her phone propped up nearby the monitor where she's listening to a lecture and being walked through a lab through uh, YouTube. And I also have these on, on media site as well. But essentially, I think this is a great way to do the class. So many, many, many times I will walk you through a lab, the navigation of menus and software clicks and all the places you need to go and how to run things, how to do things. And so it's helpful to have me maybe on your phone 
and pop in some earbuds and then I walk you through it. So having me nearby like this to narrate your steps as you navigate software that can be a little tricky sometimes is um, very useful. So use your main laptop or monitor as your work station and then put me and the lectures and the audio clips on your phone, but have it nearby that you can glance at because I navigate in the software where you can start to see where menus are, where I'm clicking, and it highlights in yellow where I'm going. So that way you can keep track of where I'm at. The nice part about this class as well is you can pause and play whenever you want. Um, you can fast forward, you can back up. So if you need to take your time on a lab or see a step one more time, you can absolutely do that because these are all pre-recorded versus taking this on campus where you may be in a lab environment and you only have 50 minutes to complete a lab and it needs to be done by the end of the hour and you go as fast as you can go but if it's not done you have to turn in what you have in reality for an online format for this class you actually have unlimited time to do a lab but there is a deadline that needs to be turned in each week so you can start and stop your lab whenever you want you can work on your paper or assignments whenever you want and largely e-learning will save your work now i tell people don't bank on that all the time i don't want you to lose work you've already done um, so we will talk about how to save and where to save to keep track of the things you've already completed but that is something that is nice about this class is that you um, can kind of complete your work in times that are convenient for you and not just in one physical setting that has access to the software and so forth. Now, that being said, it is nice in a lab environment to have real-time help with teaching assistants or lab assistants or your professor. Um, however, I do keep a Google voice number that forwards directly to my cell and you can call me and I pick up regularly. Um, you can also text me at that number as well. Um, I try to make myself available in the evenings and on the weekends as much as I can because I know that's when online students work. So uh, keep that in mind if you get stuck in a lab that there are options available to get a little bit more real-time help than you might expect in a class like this. All right, our class goals. Uh, first, just to get you comfortable using SPSS, um, it's a software program we're going to use. The nice part is you do not have to buy it. It is freely available on apps.ufl.edu, and I show you how to use that. Um, but you can buy it if you choose to. Um, however, I would say 90% of the time students do not buy it. Um, again, not necessary, but some people like having their own copy and they want to continue using it when class is finished. That is entirely up to you. We will practice the basics of social research, especially as they pertain to studying crime. And we're going to talk about a lot of different kinds of principles that have to do with how we would observe or capture or measure information about criminal behavior. Um, and we, we are very creative with this and thinking about how would we get that information into some kind of observable data and then use that data to test our ideas about what predictions we want to make based on the information. This also brings your skills together into a major research paper or report. Um, that is the biggest grade in the class. We're going to talk about that again in a second video. Um, but that is uh, the culmination of all your research skills in one place. Um, expectations of you, you do need to use SPSS software. It is required. It's the software we use in all the labs and the software you will be expected to use for your paper. Be very hands-on and active. Um, communicate often and early for help, especially as unexpected things come up in the semester and we need to make plans of how to deal with them. This is a four credit class, so we're looking at your preparation on your skills, practice labs, and your final paper. And as I've talked to students over the years, I've taught this class for over 10 years now, both online and in person. I've asked them, how much time do you spend on a class like this each week? And they said, eh, yeah, usually about 12 to 16 hours, especially as you get into paper drafting right and that's kind of the second half of the semester so make sure you've blocked out that kind of workload in your schedule i do not recommend that you take this class during the same semester as criminological theory ccj 4014 or a heavy load of required criminology and law classes I know some students don't have a choice because they're in their graduating semester and they had to arrange the schedule as it as it was with what was available and I understand that but if at all preventable that's that's a heavy load for a class like this 
this is to me one of the hardest classes in the major. It requires a lot of you and it's different than any other class you've taken because it's like a little data science workshop. So it just is a lot more intensive hands-on work than you may be used to just kind of passively listening to a lecture in your earbuds or headphones um, with a class on a specialty topic. You're going to be doing hands-on navigation and crunching data and moving through data sets and running statistics. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you may need to shuffle your schedule a little bit. Uh, with that. This course also meets the UF Gordon rule, meaning it's part of the coursework that creates the famous 24,000 words of research and writing um, required for your UF degree. Now, we're not going to write 24,000 words in this class, but um, usually the class is kind of earmarked for this rule. You'll be producing between four and 6,000 words um, as a part of that requirement. So every time I submit final grades, I also have to submit whether or not you met the golden rule the golden rule, <laughs> not that golden rule, the Gordon rule, um, as far as writing, uh, research writing and the overall degree requirements. So I actually submit kind of two assessments of your work when it comes for final grades. All right. What you should expect from me, email responses within 24 to 48 hours. I'm pretty good about that, but of course life happens and sometimes things slip through the tracks. So if you haven't heard from me, um, please um, ping me again. Texting is even faster. And so again, you can text me. I'm available for, for those phone calls, like I mentioned earlier, Zoom sessions, uh, troubleshooting. My virtual office hours are between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. every day. So um, pretty much that's like mid-work morning through lunch because I figure many students work and they may have their lunch hour available to maybe crunch through a lab quick and ask a few questions of their professor. So that seemed like a good time daily to be offering office hours. Um, occasionally I have some meetings and things that creep into those office hours. So um, I prefer that you set up an appointment with me in advance. I don't just sit in an open Zoom link for hours on end, hoping someone will walk in. Um, I prefer to know who's coming so that way I can set aside enough time for you because maybe it's just a quick question and you just need 10 minutes of my time. Or maybe you want to work through more significant issues and you want you know, 30 to 40 minutes. So I just want to make sure my time is set aside properly for what you need. I'm also here to provide reassurance when you make mistakes. That's how we learn and that's why you're here. It's really important to try to get your work completed on time and meet the deadlines because that's when I have availability to provide feedback and you can incorporate that feedback into uh, your learning and score higher next time. So if those drafts are not coming in or those labs are late, it's really hard to sequence all the things you need to to be ready to write that final paper because it's kind of like your training that you do before you write that paper. And then we basically write little drafts of sections of the paper up until final turn in. And it's good to get those drafts in, get feedback, get a score, make changes, and then um, hopefully score much, much higher on the final version. So again, just make sure you really adhere to those deadlines and due dates. Uh, we do use SPSS, the Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. That's actually what it stands for. And the free version is here, login.apps.ufl.edu. And I'll take a moment to uh, show you this in action. All right, so this is the web page that's login.apps.ufl.edu. And again, you can literally type in your Gator link, uh, username and password, and log on to apps. You will have to authenticate using Duo, as I'm sure you are familiar with, with many, many other UF-based applications. So as soon as you authenticate, you can navigate to apps. And um, what I like to do is set up some favorites. So you can see I have SPSS set up here. To be honest, I don't really care if you use version 26 or version 27. doesn't really matter to me. That's just the latest version. They're all very similar. I've actually used SPSS since version 14, and it just doesn't change much year to year. Sometimes the colors change a little bit, but that's pretty much it. But the two uh, or three apps I will suggest that you bookmark when you go to apps, you'll get like a great big list of all these different software applications that... Basically, the University of Florida has subscriptions to for lots of different courses. I tell people to go to search and to type in SPSS. Once you get here, you can actually get to the software and um, it will actually allow the software to launch. 
and open up a, a session of SPSS for you to use. And again, just be patient. It takes a little while for everything to load, um, but that's essentially how that works. So this is where you're going to do most of your work when it comes to the data management and the research and statistics for the class. Um, this is a product by IBM. It is a little bit of a RAM hog. It takes a lot of memory to get going. Um, and you can use this little circle above to adjust your view and your screen resolution to make everything fit the way you would like. But that's essentially how you start the program. Now navigating back to the login.apps.ufl screen, it's, I think, a good idea to put stars in the corner of these software programs so that way they're just kind of on your home splash page so you can just navigate to them easily. Um, so if I go back home, you can see I've set up a few others. The, the two others I recommend are um, the R drive and the M drive. So the M drive is actually a drive that is permanent student software storage. Okay, so this has folders that you can use for any class, and it's on a virtual server where you can access your files um, through uh, basically a, a VPN anytime you want. So the M drive is where you're going to save all your work once you've been working on data for the class. Okay. If we navigate back here, the other drive you'll use a lot is the R drive. Now the R drive is a drive where I store your data sets that you need to use for your labs and many of which you may choose to use for your paper. So if you search on M or search on R, you'll be able to kind of find those drives and also put them in your favorites. So that way you can have access to your files and the software you're going to use for class. Okay, so returning back to our welcome, again, this is our page, login.apps.ufl.edu. And there's one other page I wanted to show you where you can buy your own license of SPSS. Um, you don't have to, but if you prefer not to use the uh, apps page where you get access to your software, which your student fees pay for, by the way, you want your own copy, you could go to this website. It's on the hub.com. And I'm going to show you a quick version of how to do that. So this is the on the hub website. And basically they sell software to academia. And they give you educational discounts based on affiliations with different universities. So um, it's very common for people to buy kind of software licenses to use for different classes. Um, and ta-da, you actually see there is SPSS here on the website. Um, if you go into the search, you can search on SPSS and it'll take you into different versions of the product that you can purchase. Now, what this is, is a limited license agreement that lets you use an educational version of the software for either six months or 12 months, and then your license actually expires after that. Um, but what's nice is you can download the software directly on your hard drive and take it with you anywhere you go. So if you know you're traveling a lot this semester and you don't wanna have to sign in to all these virtual servers and, and so forth, you can literally just run the software on your machine and run it locally, right, on your hardware, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but what you need is the right version. So you need SPSS statistics. You don't need 28. Um, you can get it if you want to. We use 27 at, U at UF. Um, but you need to get into the grad packs. Okay, so it's the grad pack, SPSS, IBM SPSS statistics grad pack. And once you're here, um, you can get whatever product you're interested in. So you need to get the standard grad pack, okay? Not the base, because the base does not have all the functions that we run in the class. You need to get the standard grad pack. So you can either get the standard grad pack, you don't need premium, standard is fine either for this price or this price. And you can see the difference is, do you want a six month rental or a 12 month rental? And you can purchase it for Windows or Mac, depending on what operating system you're using. Okay, so you select the product you want and um, it'll give you your license key. And you wanna make sure again, you have that SPSS statistics standard grad pack, which includes the regression menu right here. Okay.
So again, if you want to purchase, um, you can work with On The Hub. The nice part about On The Hub is let's say your hard drive fries because you spilled soda all over it, they will give you one more free license as a backup if for some reason disaster strikes and you find yourself having to buy a new computer halfway between now and the end of the semester. So, um, so they're really good vendors to work with. They're very reasonable. Um, but that is an option that is available to you. But again, most students don't need it. It's here if you want it. All right, so in, in closing, just how to be successful for the class, treat this like a capstone and training course for your criminology career. This is very much a how-to course um, that, again, is hands-on. Keep a data log, a notebook of your notes when running analyses, because there are times where you need to keep track of surveys and information about question types and answer types and categories and numbers. And it's hard to keep track of those pieces while you're navigating software and listening to a lecture all at the same time. So I tell people, keep just a spiral bound notebook um, or a notepad next to your computer that you can quickly jot down things like value labels or names of variables to um, remember what they are because you'll be navigating through menus and suddenly be asked for that information and you've already navigated off that screen and it's gone. And SPSS is kind of cranky with copy paste and it's also a little cranky with um, closing and opening windows. It's an old IBM dinosaur so you have to kind of work with the way it works. And again, just having some post-it notes or a spiral down notebook is super handy. So I would strongly recommend that you keep a data log to, of your notes when you're in the middle of labs or working on your variables for your paper. Uh, make sure you dedicate time each week to the class. Um, set aside that time, make it regular. It's gonna keep you organized. Install and obtain your software early. So if you are thinking of purchasing, uh, make sure you get that done quickly. Uh, make sure you use really good file storage habits and naming conventions because it's very easy to lose track of the last version of the lab you were in and then suddenly you created variables the other day and now you can't find them because you can't remember what you named it. Um, so just yeah, make sure you keep track of your stuff. Be really honest about what works and what doesn't, what's confusing. I work very, very hard to keep the class organized and straightforward. Um, and watch every video in this class. It really does pay off. So I'm going to wrap up with uh, just a great big welcome. And uh, this semester, for the first time, we're actually teaching twice as many students. We have UF online students as well as residential students in criminology and law. So welcome to both populations. And uh, basically, our residential students are just taking this course online because we have fewer offerings of it available in person. So you're both going to be in the same class, um, but I have one section of you that's 100% online, the other one that's residential. You guys pay different fees. You have different tuition. And so I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of that, but that's why we keep you in different sections. Um, and different requirements for being in those programs, right? So, but essentially the class is the same. So you're all together. Um, we will make sure that we keep that in mind as we do lab partners. And I have TAs that you'll be working with that can be very, very help you. I have one TA assigned to the online students and another TA assigned to the residential students. So we have double the TA power this semester to try to get feedback and grades and everything in place quickly. So welcome to the class. Please reach out if you have questions and we'll see you soon. Happy fall.